Do we need to do 27? No. Okay, 33. 33 is find the vertical asymptotes of the graph of f of x and describe the behavior of f of x to the left and right of each vertical asymptote. So I have f of x equals tangent x over sine x. This is a, is, are the grays calculator or non? Um, no, the only two where they're matching the graph. That's no, I think gray is calculator, y'all. No, gray, gray is no calculator. Gray indicate problems designed to be solved without. Oh. Well, I think this is a without. Right? Well, tangent is sine over cosine. So sine, the sine cancel. Right, which is... One of our must know kind of functions, parent graphs, right? We can uh, one over well, or one over cosine. So let's think about what it looks like. I disagree. I think we, we could do this without the, but let's just look. Um, where are my asymptotes on these? One over cosine x. So where is cosine undefined? Or where's cosine zero? We really just graphed them and looked at them. For this one, we're reasoning through it since. Say it again. Is where cosine is zero. Cosine is the x value. So yeah. it's zero. So we're talking pi over two, three pi over two, right? Yeah. Because we want where cosine is zero. So if I'm on that unit circle, cosine is my x, right? The only place x is zero is the top and the bottom. Y'all look at there? So every pi over 2, right? Or every odd pi over 2. And it really doesn't matter. We know that the graph, well, it does matter. Ah. Which one does this one look like? <laughs> All right, remember this is one, it's either going to start here and go up or it's going to start down and go up. Which one does this one do? How do you know? How do you know? How, do you know? How can you figure that out? What's the cosine of zero? Right? And we know because we know what the this graph looks like. What? What you mean up and up? What's up and up? Because we talked about what secant x looks like. But if you if you reason through it, remember when we reason through on y, cosine cosine is the x value, right? And so we're one over, so it's the reciprocal of the x value. So as I move from 0 to pi over 2, the x values are getting smaller. So if I reciprocate that, they're really getting bigger. But if you just remember, secant and cosecant look the same. It's just where they start, right? Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's the what my fifth or sixth is, middle name? My middle name is actually seven. Like, seven. My middle name is N D A K twelve. All right. <laughs> so describe find the vertical asymptotes of the graph. So here are the my vertical two, asymptotes. You could just say where where k is an odd integer. Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. Yeah, this is a member of. Yeah, yeah. or belong same. same. Why does it keep wrapping a Wait, now what? For 33, 
I don't have the solution for 33 in front of me. But this is well, this is just part A, find the vertical asymptotes, yeah. Any trig function, you want to zoom trig because if you go from 1 to 10, that's a lot different than going from 2 pi to negative 2 pi. All right. Well, it doesn't, it, okay, so describe the behavior of f of x to the left and right of each vertical asymptote. Okay, so as it approach, as the limit, as x approaches k pi over 2 from the left. Is it always the same? No, so I can't really say that, and that's probably where you were getting into. Right. So, let's think about the ones that are the same, okay? <laughs> pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. 7 pi over 2. The in behavior at pi over 2 is going to be the same as 5 pi over 2, right? And in fact, what is it, what are the intervals here? K pi, right? Because the, the amount, of, so it's every, so it's essentially the, this is going to be, we're not going to say this from the left. We're talking, let's talk about what we're talking about first. We're talking about pi over 2 plus k pi, where k is just any integer, right? Would that put us, would that put us at every, because you said this is every pi. So as long as I start, as long as I start at the right place, right, because it alternates, exactly. So, I'm going to have the in behavior of this one, but then I'm also going to have to do one that's 3 pi over 2 plus k pi, where k is an integer. And that's going to give me the other asymptote, right? Because you see, the thing that we're looking at is because the limit from the left the limit from the left is different than the limit from the right. But this one and this one are going to be the same, whereas this one and this one will be the same. Does that make sense? Every other ones will be the same. So, bless you. Here, the limit as x approaches, and I'm going to say pi over 2 plus k pi from the right, and I'll just come out to the side and define k being an integer. Oh my gosh. I'm going to say of f of x. I'm going to do it. From, is this what they did in the, in the solution? Four? A was probably defined as being all of this or something to start with. What's a four for? Let me split it up. Wow. Um, keeping it even or odd, but I don't know why they're doing by four. Oh, I don't know why they're doing. But either way, it's right. 
Okay, are we doing the A and the B? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and here I would go 3 pi over 2, because I'm going to the next one, plus k pi's from the right, and all right, here we go. Now everything's written out. Tell me from the right, the pi over 2 one. From the right, it would be negative infinity. All right, understand where I am. I'm here. Right now, I'm looking at this one. Because I'm talking about every pi over 2 one. So... Oh, this is k pi. Right, but this is coming from the right instead of the left. So coming from the right, I'm talking about down here. But coming from the left, positive infinity. So you're talking about this one right here? Yes. Yes. Now when I get to the other one, this one, I'm talking about the asymptote that would be here. And so this is going to be, right? So the second highlighted line there, if I'm coming from the right, what is the limit? Mm -hmm. And how about the left? No, again, I took, it's negative infinity. Because from the left, this is from the left. Yeah. So from the left, it would be infinite. Two, three pi, look at the three pi over two. From the left. All right, three pi over two from the left, going down. Um, but from the right, it's going up. So from the left down, right. Wait. Wait, wait, are you talking about this one right here? We're talking about this yellow line. Right. So from the right. Going to negative. From the right side, coming towards. But are you talking about this one or this one up here? This one? Well, they both. They both impact because... As I approach in as I approach three pi over two from the left, it's different than if I approach it from the right because one's going up and one's going down. I didn't come over for you. So from the left is the bottom one, but from the right is correct. the top one. That's correct. Uh, I didn't know. I thought you would just. I thought it would be like from the left. So how do you know? So it's both of these quadrants. You're just looking at one. Side You're just side. right because if it. You're looking at, like I said, at the 3 pi over 2 one. So at this one, if I'm coming from the right, right. I'm on the left, right. But couldn't you come from the left from this one too? No, because you have to look at the graph as a whole. So not, not as just a piece of the graph, but the whole thing. So if I'm coming up on this one, then I come in from the left and I come in from the right. Uh, All right. I always I wrote my similar. Yes. Right. Well, I wrote a uh, limit if x goes to the infinity <laughs> minus a being in there. I have f of x equals that negative. Okay, but what we were saying is really there's two different right. situations so because this asymptote right. have so different left yeah. and right than this asymptote. <laughs> So that's why I set up four different ones from the left. So you see what I'm saying? You can't say every asymptote, it does the same thing. Because this asymptote from the right, it goes up. But this asymptote from the right, it goes down. Or from the left. So that's why that one was a little tricky. All right, what else on your homework? 39, 39, you said? All right, 39. 
we're going to talk a little more about end behavior for that. To be a horizontal asymptote, the limit has to equal infinity. So if it doesn't equal infinity and you just get a number, there's no horizontal asymptote. Okay. I've checked the chat like 20 times. All right, let's do this one, y'all. All right, 39. Find a power function in behavior model for F. So 3x squared is a good in behavior model. Do we agree? It's just the very first one. Kind of like when we did in behavior in algebra 2. And it was based off the leading coefficient in the degree. We take that very first term. And it represents. It's a good behavior model for us. And then it says identify any horizontal asymptotes. So horizontal asymptotes happen when? When the limit... As I approach infinity of f of x equals a number, or the limit as I approach negative infinity. I hope this is still recording. Okay. Right? Because that says that says it is I go far, far, far out. It's it's evening out towards a number. That is the definition of horizontal asymptote. So what is the limit as I go to infinity? There is none, right? It's not It's not a number. It would equal what? What's the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x? This means that there are no horizontal asymptotes. Okay. Uh, oh my god. I just like. <laughs> well, and if you think about it too, all right, so we use this to model the end behavior, right? And if you plug infinity in there, three times infinity squared, we're going to infinity, right? But yes, yes. Then yes, there would have been one. At, yeah. What else? If you're talking about a, just a regular polynomial function, no. Top heavy, bottom heavy, same. We're going to talk about that. This is defining it calculus way. Is what we're doing. Did y'all not learn top heavy, bottom heavy, same? So that works with rational functions. And if you're using rational functions, that's fine. The limit thing works with any function. Yeah. All right. What? In calculus, I think. Um, no, it wasn't all of them. For the second semester or for first semester? Well, maybe second would be a better because first semester it didn't have a lot of people that dropped. Yeah. Um. Job. I wish she hadn't. Um, I wish she hadn't. I tried to convince her to stay. I can't convince her. Um, how much what? Not even trying. Like, how much more is there second semester, or is it more first semester? Second semester, it's probably. A third to a half of new stuff, and then we'll just take it. Maybe not even that much. Which one did you use? I'm not dropping, but is it really that bad? 
I wouldn't with the work you put in. You put in more work first semester than you do first semester. For sure. Huh? <laughs> Everyone who did their work got A's. Like everyone who turned in their homework and did, and the workload cuts down drastically once we finish new material. You'll definitely have an A. Okay, forty-one. Um, find a power function in behavior model for F. So remember, that's where we're going to take, as long as we're in standard form, top and bottom, and we are, we're going to take the first term. And I did go over this a little bit fast on Friday, and I understand that. So. Okay, so, no, it's okay. In behavior model, in behavior model just takes the very first term of a polynomial function or a power function. Or it, we're, we're generally looking for something that will model the in behavior for us that's a little easier to work with than what we're given. Okay? In this case, yes, yes. If it's a rational function like that, yes. Well, right. So now if you were looking at this and I asked you to identify the horizontal asymptotes or what's the in behavior do? You look at it and go, yeah. But if I gave you this, if I gave you that, right, you would know that the limit as x approaches is that what we're doing is, yeah, I mean, horizontal. The limit as x approaches infinity, right? As I get bigger and bigger and bigger here, that goes to what? Zero. If, okay. Yeah, this one, okay, for one it's like that. But you're exactly right. That's exactly the way I would reason through it is I would go, okay, Infinity is not actually a real number, but it still shares some of those, some of those kind of properties. So if I put it, if I substitute it in, if you have one over infinity, which means I'm huge on the bottom, right? Then I'm getting smaller and smaller, and I'm getting closer and closer to zero. So that means the limit is going to. Wait, so like. No, like it's going to zero. And then the same thing on the left side. It's going to zero again because it doesn't matter if that's negative infinity or positive infinity. It is still going to zero. Oh, and this one has some. Okay. Oh, you didn't have to do all that. So this tells me I have horizontal asymptotes at y equals zero. What are y'all doing? Y'all are making me nervous. Okay. Yes. 43. All right. So 43, same concept. Let's look at it. We have 4x cubed minus 2x plus 1 over x minus 2. Van, give me a good in behavior model. Yes. It's a parabola. It's going up. Do so. The limit as I go to infinity is infinity. How about the limit as I go to negative infinity? It's still infinity, which means I have no. And Van, if you think back in Katie to your rational functions, it's top heavy. And do you remember what happens when it's top heavy? No, there's no is the answer. There are no horizontal asymptotes. All right. Yeah. 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 
Y equals zero. Bottom heavy is Y equals zero. Okay, so whenever it's the same, it's the coefficient, the leading coefficient at the top divided by the leading coefficient at the bottom. That's the point. All right. Other questions about your homework before we move on? All right. I'm going to, because clearly I have lost about, well, one of you. And if you have not already noticed, hopefully you will, or I'm going to tell you now. A lot of stuff, well, that's part of it. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff in calculus, guys. We have to prove by definition or show or reason through because that's what they're looking for is formal definition. So let me tell you how to prove an in behavior model. Not prove like that. What? Not just yet. Not just yet. We're going to get that. Yeah, because one's max. And I'm just going to do just a little bit more from 2-2, and we're going to talk about the beginning parts of 2-3 today. As I approach positive or negative infinity, if you take two functions and you divide them by each other and you get 1, that is how you show that g of x is a good in-behavior model of f of x. Okay, does that make sense? Because remember, when we're going to infinity, like let's look at one that you did on your homework. What was it? We said Let me do one that's not like this. Let me do one that's This is number 46 in your homework. You'll have this tonight, but we're starting it together. All right, so my first question to you is, this is not, this is not what we're used to seeing, right? We're not used to seeing, we. this is not a power function. This is not, I know. So if I need an in behavior model for this one, my first thought is let's try x squared. So to know if it, because it's easy whenever it's a polynomial over a polynomial, right? We can just circle those first terms, go with it and be done. But when it's something like this, it's a little bit harder. So I need to know, I hope x squared is a good in behavior model because I know x squared. Right? Exactly. And it goes to infinity on both ends. So let's test it because to prove it, I'm going to do this. I'm going to divide them. And I'm going to do the limit as it goes to infinity. So the limit as I approach infinity of x squared plus e to the negative x divided by x squared. If that equals 1, I'm in a great position to use that as an in behavior model. So how can I reason through this? How do I test that? Well, so if I plug in, let's think about using infinity here, okay? This going to infinity squared is still going to really be infinity, right? So again, infinity squared, infin okay, so this is the same thing. So my big question is what, what happens here? Because I'm, I'm approaching infinity here. So I'm thinking about leaving those. And those are the same. What happens here? 1 over e to the x. But I'm plugging in infinity here. So it's really, so really I'm going to 0 here. Do you agree with that? Because e, e is that number. 2.7, right? And if I raise that to infinity and I keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, that's the bottom of the fraction getting bigger and bigger. And if we know that if the bottom of the fraction gets bigger and bigger, the number's getting smaller and smaller, I'm going to zero. So really, this is like saying this. Do you agree with that? Because this is zero, right? So if I divide anything by itself, I'm going to one. 
I didn't mean zero divided by zero. The end behavior model on the bottom. And if I raise that to infinity, what you mean? Well, you could if you wanted to, but let's say you didn't have a calculator on here. You can use infinity to reason through things this way. Okay. Now, with that said, um, that tells me that this is an in behavior model. So then if I'm looking at this, what would the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared plus e to the negative x be? Oh, it's infinity. It's infinity. Why? Because x squared is what I'm looking at for the end behavior. Remember, my end behavior model is what I am using to tell what the end behavior of this function is. And that's the point of it. The point of an end behavior model is using it to model the more difficult function. Okay. All right. Okay. An in behavior model, in behavior model models the end of a more complicated function. One that I don't know the end behavior of. This, this is not the end behavior. That was just proving that this works. To show that it works, I have to show that it equals one. Now that I know it works, I can use this to model the end behavior of that. Does that make sense? This is the proof. Dividing them and it goes to one as you get to infinity. If that works, then use g of x to predict what f of x is going to do. Let's do another. Oh, you're talking about over here? Exactly, exactly. Right, right. So it's telling me that no matter, I don't know what the inside of this function does, but I know that the ends are going to do just like x squared does, regardless of what all this junk is in here. Well, if you're asked to find an end behavior model, you would want to do that to make sure it's a good end behavior model. Okay. Especially if it's not a polynomial. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Right. You do the original. This is original. This is what I think my EBM is. Um, try this one. Find the a good in behavior model. Yes. Yeah. What happens? What what happens if you do everybody's asking what's the sign of infinity? So if I go to if as I approach infinity of sine x, what happens? Wait. So what? It's oscillating between negative and it doesn't go anywhere, so 
It's not gonna exist. <laughs> it's not gonna exist. Because, right, right. So let's see what happens. I'm assuming y'all are trying X squared as the EBM. So if I want to do in paper, so let's see, what's the limit here? This is just my test. Does it work? Okay. This is not the end behavior. This is the test. Does it work? I hope it works because if it works, I already know the end behavior. But let's test it. As I go to infinity and I do x squared plus sine x divided by x squared. I could split these up, right? x squared over x squared plus sine x over Well, that would give me one, which is what I want. I do, but uh, because you're adding, you can't you can't cancel out when you're adding. All right, so let's reason through this for just a second. This does not exist, but we did say it's fluctuating between what? Negative one, negative one and one, right? But how about on the bottom here? It's infinity. Infinity, no matter if I'm negative one to one or I'm going anywhere in between, if I'm dividing by such a huge number, this is going to zero, right? Because of that bottom there. Because because technically the limit doesn't exist because it's oscillating right, between so negative one, one and zero. one. So even if it were one of those values at any point in time, it's still ne no matter what it was, it's always going to go to zero. So infinity is kind of a conceptual thing we're working with as we go through here, right? But this is still right. So that's not the answer. The answer is not one. This was my test to see can I use it. So yes, let's use it. And let's describe the end behavior of this function, and it's the same thing as here. It goes to infinity at negative or positive plus the problem. Right. If if it's ever in the bottom like that, and you're going to infinity, if you ever have over infinity, like if this is just a constant or it's some value like that, and this is, this is going to zero. Um, let me show you a little trick that may come in handy at some point in time. This is another one of those things I might with circle or highlight in my notes as I go through. It's just a, a little trick you may have learned in pre-cal and you may not have. That's why I'm throwing this in here. The limit as I go to infinity, either positive or negative infinity of f of x, is the same thing as the limit as I approach positive or negative zero if I t do the reciprocal of every x in the function. I told you. It's a little trick. A little trick. You can't really have plus or minus zero. Say that again. A little trick. We're fixing to use it for a problem. They thought about this. All right, let's see. 
this is number all right i'm doing what y'all want me to do i'm doing some of the evens as we go and you'll have the odds this is 52. if f of x equals x times the sine of 1 over x and i need to find the limit as x approaches infinity and the limit as x approaches negative infinity. I know that, or I think I know, that you guys could figure this out without reciprocating it. Huh? Yeah, we're at the end of that little section. There's a few things I left out there. Okay, well, let's look at Let's do it both ways. Let's look at it this way. If I'm going to infinity, this is the sign of 1 over x. <laughs> but if I was multiplying, why did you keep doing that? <laughs> okay. If I'm going to infinity, okay, let's think about this like infinity times the sine of 1 over infinity. Zero, because 1 over, your voice sounds terrible. Sorry. She had a chance. Okay, let's get back to the math. That's why I was doing infinity. Okay, that makes wait. Okay, so this is easy. Why? Because I didn't. Can we calculate this to a half? I remember. Sign one. Going through the condition. No. That's why I stopped for a minute. Reasoning through it, it seems it would be right. But if I did 1 over x, sine x, and I went to 0, it still would be 0. This is wrong. Yeah, this is wrong. All right, so it looks this way. It looks as though sine of 1 over infinity, right? That's like saying the sine of what? 1 over infinity is 0, right? So the sine of zero, so now I would have infinity times zero, right? Well, that's not the trick, but I wanted to show you how the trick would give you the same thing. Okay. So the trick says that if I have this, it says I use substitution. So how about I should be able to do the limit as x approaches 0, right, of f of x, f of 1 over x, sorry. All right? So that would be the limit as x goes to 0, and I'm going to do 1 over x times the sine of x. Are we in agreement there? Because this property, this nifty little trick that I showed you. Nifty little trick. <laughs> All right, so there at the end, I reciprocated, what? I reciprocated every X and I changed instead of going from infinity, I went to zero. Now, if I put zero in, now I can't really put zero in here because I'd be dividing by zero, but that's a parent graph that we know very well. And what does it go to as I go to zero? Infinity, that's right. This is this graph, 1 over x. And it's got an asymptote at zero. Here's what I'm getting at, y'all. Look. 
There will be situations where, well, actually, the directions on this say find the limit at, no, it says use the graph of y equals 1 over x to find the limit as you approach infinity. Yes, this is a calculator. You don't need it, but you could use it. All right. Zero. It's zero. And it's zero both ways, whether you do it. No, you're going to be the same. The trick is, if you're going to infinity, okay, you can change that as going to zero. I didn't mean to put the plus or minus there. Nobody caught that. You can change that as going to zero as long as you reciprocate every x in the function. It's going to be zero. Let me show you one little log. This is a thinking question. Y'all think about it before you answer it. It means there's not really going to be a lot of work. We're just going to reason through this. Find a limit and give a convincing argument that the value is correct. Find the limit. What's on the top? Natural log? Natural log divided by log of x. I'm not going to let you mandate that. Come on, guys. I don't know what you should do. No, it's not. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's rewind back to Algebra 2. <laughs> yeah. Can you get these all in the same base? Yes, ma'am. Good? How? Okay, so this is a, the top one is a base E. The bottom one is a base 10. How can I change a base so that the base is the same? Oh dear. <laughs> Remember change a base when you couldn't put it in your calculator because it was only base 10 and you had to do log of the number that was written big divided by log of the little base number? So we can use that to get us into the same base. So up top, <laughs> log, if you want to get it in base 10, okay, over log of E. And I'm going to multiply that. I'm going to just do 1 over log X. I did change of base formula. All right, this is change of base. Okay, so it's the first one with the base. Y'all are okay, right. I get it. The second part is the reciprocal. So I was right. You do multiply by this. Okay. Yes, we did. All right. Now. This is. This is actually. Oh. Yes. Is mass second integer? Sorry. What? Is mass second integer? I don't know that I would say second integer. Well, maybe. Because you don't even have to look at the textbook anymore. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. I am looking at the textbook. I'm getting the problems from right here. Anyway. You're not wrong. Okay. Now what? How does this help me or does it help me? 
Do you agree that this is the same thing as this? We got there somehow. If you say so. We got there somehow. That's good for the value of people Yeah, actually, I do agree with that. I agree with how you got there. I agree with you right up. I just wouldn't have thought of how to get there. But okay, but I don't. I don't have a an X in here anymore. I know. So wait just a second. So it's a I found that rational function. What's the limit of a constant? The constant itself. Is that a constant? Is it a constant? Yes. Because I asked you to find this limit and give justification. Give me a reason why. So, I just rewrote it is all I did. Do you agree with that? So, my question, what does what? Um, it's actually the same thing if we'd gone the other way and we had done change of base on the bottom instead of on the top, you would end up with this. We just did it a different way. But what I'm getting at is this is actually a constant value. So my argument here would be that it equals the constant because by the properties of limits, the limit as I go to infinity of a constant is the constant itself. If, okay, if I ask you the limit as x approaches infinity of 5, what would it's 5. Same thing here. What's the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over log e? Because this is a constant, right? There's no variable in there. Wait, how do you know that that's correct? How do you know that that's correct? Like, how, like, how do you know that what we just did is correct? You got to trust the process, Allison. No comment. You messed up, you messed up. Because all I did was I, I followed log rules and log properties to do it. Yes. And we will, that's one of those things that as it comes up, I'll try. That's why I wanted to do this one with you to remind you of a couple of those. Because y'all all struggled with logs whenever we got to it. And I'm going to assume you struggled with them in pre cal too. All right. I think I am going to stop instead of going to 2 3. But I want to talk to you about a couple of the ones on here that I want you to do. We'll do continuities tomorrow. Well, some of it. It's no. I just, this one, I just want you to. Um, for those first four, I want you to tell me yes or no. Does that look like a good in behavior model? That's an easy one. I was really doing this for the back of them. Um, but in addition, we're on, we're still in the same section, 76 to 77. Gosh, dog. We have done some of these together. We did, I think we did like four or five of them together. We definitely did this one together. Are you going to post this one on the Yes. Oh, wait, so we're not doing this.